Hi folks, Shell Buzzy here with my On Buzzyman blog. Things that help you in and around your home. And I know a number of homeowners are downsizing into condominiums. And uh, when you're downsizing into condominiums, in a lot of cases, you're going into uh, underground garages. And that's what I want to talk about for a moment. Because underground garages are really... Well, they're kind of nice and comfy when it comes to a cold day in the wintertime. You go down to a nice dry car, normally at a temperature that is much, much warmer than outside, but you have a lot of restrictions. Yes, restrictions. One, what happens if oil leaks from your vehicle onto the concrete floor? Two, what happens if you've went out and uh, invested in an electric car? Uh, well, these are items that you will run into in strata complexes, be it of the type underground or be it even above ground if it's a strata that controls all parking areas. Might be out even on the uh, driveway. But let's talk about underground oil leaks as well as uh, electric cars, okay? Uh, number one, oil leaks. What do you do about an oil leak? Well, before you do anything, test the concrete under your vehicle in the garage area where you have now been given authority to park, okay? Normally numbered, so therefore you've got either a parking spot or you might have two parking spots, okay? But once you know which ones are yours, check it out. Check it out at the time that you're buying uh, the strata or maybe a brand spanking new one. And if it is a brand spanking new one, then after you have everything in place, like your strata is formed, then I suggest very strongly that the concrete be sealed, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you seal your own because the uh, strata will want to, well, not uh, have one, two, three sealed and the balance not sealed. So therefore, let's talk about what you use for sealants. There's all kinds of concrete sealers out there, environmentally friendly ones, no odors, all that sort of thing. They're water-based. Uh, the main thing is make sure you clean and clean again with my, oh, I always show this, Shell Buzzy's home cleaning formula. And it's available throughout your hardware and your paint stores and all your home uh, uh, building centers, okay? Wash it, rinse it. You don't have to get the hose out. All you need is a scrub pail and a mop and some rinse water and the cleaning formula. Wash, rinse, let it dry. Okay? Then seal it. Now, how do you seal it? You don't seal it. Let's take and draw a line here now. There's a line and there's the thickness of the concrete. When you seal, you don't take a paint tray and pour in the uh, sealer and then using your roller to do the sealant of the concrete. You puddle it out. You take the can that you bought the sealer in or the bottle and you pour it. You pour it, literally pour it out onto the surface making a puddle. Then you take your roller and you roll it out. So you're here. Here's your roller here, you're standing here, there you are there, you got your arms out there and your legs down here, and you're, <laughs> you're rolling it. You roll it out, let the concrete take what it wants. That way, the concrete is sealed. Or you can spray it with uh, a garden spray apparatus. Put it in, pump it up, spray it on. The main thing is, don't put it in a tray. That is wrong. The reason why you don't get adequate on the surface of the concrete to seal it. It doesn't have adequate to go into the concrete to seal the concrete. You gotta seal it. You gotta become uh, part of that uh, aggregate and cement and sand and you seal the porosity of the concrete. So once you've sealed it, dries in about uh, oh, four hours. Then once it's dry, when you drive on it, and there's any oil spill or any oil leaks or any grease leaks, you'll be able to take a, a, a grease remover, my cleaning formula, wash it and rinse it, and it comes off. But if you allow oil to puddle on concrete, then I can tell you right now, it's going to go down deep into the concrete. And then you have to take it up out of the concrete to make it 
clean again. Well, you try and get concrete to say goodbye to oil unless you're using something that's going to act as a poultice, a poultice that's going to draw it out of the concrete. Drawing it out is, well, you can do it. Again, you could take my cleaning formula, mix it up, and you pour a puddle out onto the surface. Puddle it out. Then you take an old towel that you don't have too much faith or don't need anymore and soak it in the cleaning formula and you lay that towel over top. And over top of that, you put a piece of polyethylene plastic and leave it overnight. What happens now, the cleaning formula goes down into the concrete, pulls that oil because you know oil will come to the surface of water, comes up to the surface, what's there? The towel's there. The towel picks it up, and the polyethylene over top won't allow it to evaporate. So there you got your own little poultice, and you poultice it out. All of that taking place, then you have to do what I talked earlier about, the puddling and the spreading, and do it after the fact. After you've had all that sweat equity that you invested into something, if they had have sealed it first, you wouldn't have had the problem. It's just that easy. It's not, well, it is just that easy. So really, when in doubt, don't pout. Let Shell help you out. This is why the blog. Because otherwise, you could be spending dollars on deposits towards that or find, if you're in a strata, find for having oil leaks and having that be removed professionally. So, again, why spend the bucks on the deposit? Why not do it or have it done or make the uh, motion at a meeting to have it done? It's very inexpensive. Maybe a volunteer group could do it within the building. Okay? It's just one of those things that should be done. Okay? So, all of that being said, it's really an easy project and a clean non-odor project. Now, the other thing that uh, we talked about is electric cars, okay? Now, electric cars, when you have electric cars, you have, obviously, a place to plug in to a duplex receptacle. Now, you will find that before you go out and purchase your electric vehicle, then I always suggest to my staff and myself when I'm talking to you on the telephone and also to car dealers that please ask if you live in a strata, can you plug into the common area duplex receptacle, which is a plug, okay? A plug, like right here where you plug in. Because if it's a common it won't be long until they'll say, which they are now, they're making motions and putting into the bylaws, no plugging in to common area duplex receptacles in garages because that goes to the common expense of the building and then everybody's paying for your fuel. And it's not long until they're not very happy about that sort of thing. So... Always, when in doubt, don't pout. Let Shell help you out. At least get you going in the right direction so you can get the answers. So, oil or any other uh, item that may soak into it, like if you <laughs> ever break a bottle of red wine, uh, again, cleaning concrete, same old position, same old procedures, you follow it through. But electric cars, always check first. It's just that easy. Until next time, folks. The Yon Buzzy Mun blog will be waiting for you to watch. Bye bye for now.